Welcome back everybody. In this video, we're gonna dive into some of the features that the ASA supports. So we're gonna talk briefly about each one individually, talk about what they, what it is, what it does, and uh, its applicability to this individual section. There's gonna be some VPN stuff that we talk about, um, but beyond the VP, uh, anything beyond VPNs, uh, we're not gonna be really diving into any of that in this course. We will be taking a look at that, well, this, this section of videos, I should say. Uh, we will be taking a look at that in the VPN section, which is the 209 exam, which would match the 209 exam, I should say. So without any further ado, let's dive in. So when we talk about ASAs, the um, it's in, one of the, the key things about ASA is it, it's, it's a staple firewall, first and foremost. That's what its job is to do. So that's what Cisco developed it to be. And all that good stuff that goes along with it. So what I'm gonna do is over here on the right hand side, I'm gonna write out what some of the different features are and talk about each one individually as we go along. So on the far right over here, let's go ahead and move some cables out of the way real quick so I have room to, room to draw. One second for me folks, thank you for waiting. So um, the first one here is gonna be staple packet filtering or staple packet inspection. So when we talk about stateful inspection, this refers to the ability of tracking connections in the state table. So connections inbound to the outbound, so inside to outside connections from the, um, basically from any interface to any other interface inside the ASA. That's as simple as it, could, as it breaks down. And depending on which the directionality of the flow, if it's from outside to inside, then if there isn't already an existing flow from the high security level to the low security level, the traffic is simply going to be dropped. Now, if you have a access list that's permitting the traffic from the low security zone or level to the higher security level, then that traffic will be permitted. And then once it's permitted, a entry in the connection table will be added for that particular flow. Now, we also have what they call application inspection where you're able to end control, where you're able to look at more than just the application itself, meaning you have the, the protocol, so TCP, and then you also have the, um, the, the port, so transport and port. So protocol and transport and port number, that's going to help you dictate HTTP, Telnet, SSH, you know, uh, anything else. It's the uh, DPAC and inspection uh, capability that gives you the ability to dive into those details to pull out the information you need. So is it a, uh, a get, is it a post, is it some other variable in there that you may need to go in there and take advantage of? Then we have user-based access control. So this is an inline user authentication, also known as cut-through proxy, where you can tell the ASA to permit communication to the internet as long as the user has authenticated. Now, we're gonna be taking a look at this down the road, but the idea is um, once the user has authenticated, then the proxy is going to allow the inspection of the user's traffic flows and away you go. Then we also have session auditing. So you can basically record any of the user sessions that are going on inside of the ASA that it's allowing through. So I should say it's, there is a user, whoops, there's user access control, there's also uh, session auditing, and so on. If we dive a little bit deeper, we now we can take a look at the, uh, the modules that can get inserted into the ASA. Now you might say, well, what do you mean by a module? Well, for the longest time, there was the, um, the, the IPS sensor, so the intrusion prevention uh, system sensor that you would physically plug in to the uh, service module. There was the uh, CX module, 
now there's the uh, the source fire or the firepower module and these are deep packet inspection capabilities so you can see what's going on and block traffic based off of that so we're going to say uh, we'll, we'll say DPI DPI and IPS so you need to be able to identify the traffic and then be able to do something about it there's also reputation based botnet traffic so you have botnet if I could write it'd be great botnet now botnet is going to be able to uh, tra the botnet traffic filtering is going to uh, detect and filter traffic involved with botnet activity or uh, or I should say on infected hosts so it's going to be able to detect that and be able to block it when it needs to there's also category based URL filtering so you can uh, leverage a URL filtering server to enforce AUPs or accessible use controls and policies and then user control access or control user access to different web type, uh, web servers so it's a kind of like a, a proxy in a way um, but it's meant to filter out traffic to nefarious websites that you don't want people going to so that's a couple of examples so they that's just a couple of examples of how the the high-end stuff there are other things like the UC proxy where you can allow UC traffic through the ASA and then you can configure the ASA um, as an authorized UC proxy to where the ASA can terminate and relay cryptographically protected UC connections or encrypted traffic or uh, heavily authenticated between the client and server so the phone and the call manager you also have the denial of service prevention with uh, things like the threat detection you also have the threat correlation so you're able to detect fail uh, 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 detect threats in the network and correlate them to specific connections and then block those specific attacks now from a VPN perspective uh, ASA supports both remote access from a client and client list capability where you're able to go through and allow remote access through either a web portal or through a client like the AnyConnect client ASA also supports site to site VPNs both um, IV1 and IV2 uh, going back briefly on the remote access VPNs, there's also the ability of doing IGV1 and IGV2 as well as SSL and IPsec VPNs. From a high availability perspective, we have the uh, high availability failover clustering where you can have multiple devices uh, acting in concert with one another. Then there is the redundant interfaces, which is going to be another redundancy capability, but in the terms of how things operate in the the failover you're able to take and uh, provide redundancy based off of uh, in case of a hardware failover or a failure um, with redundant interfaces you bind two connections so if you were to look at ASA v1 we can configure both of those interfaces to be in, in a redundant uh, group pair and then what will end up happening is one of those interfaces will uh, be primary, the other one will be secondary, and if one goes down, the other one will take over for it. And there's ether channels, which is very simple, similar to redundant interfaces, but instead of with redundant interfaces, only one interface is active at any time. With um, the ether channel, both interfaces are active at the same time, so you can it's, it gives you a little bit more. Uh, redundancy resiliency and scale in terms of that then you can also do virtualization through security contexts and basically you can virtualize a firewall with, through what they call multi-context mode the ASA's that we're dealing with at least right now do not support that and um, I'm going to be testing that out down the road um, it's more of it's a it's out of scope multi-context mode an active active failover is out of scope for CCNP security, but it is in scope for CCIE security. 
So I will be definitely taking a deeper look at that down the road. But um, there's only a handful of features in this section of video that I'm not going to be uh, diving too terribly deep into. And um, clustering and um, the multi-context mode with active-active failover, that is one of the other topics I'm not going to be diving too terribly deep into. Um, you can you can definitely route with these ASAs, so it gives you a lot of flexibility in that regard. So I'll be able to take a look at diving into a lot of the the nitty gritty details of what the um, uh, the routing protocols come into play. So playing around a lot with that, and this will allow us to play around with some of the different capabilities from a routing perspective. Now, obviously, it's not going to be the same fe uh, rich feature set as a routing uh, as a router, but it will be pretty similar in most cases. There's also the ability of natting, and we'll be playing playing the nat game quite a bit later on, where we play around with a lot of different capabilities of nat. Then we'll be diving into transparent or bridged operation, which is what ASA v2 is going to be primarily responsible for. We'll be playing around with that in how it operates. And then we will be taking a look at um, DTP dynamic DNS, and uh, briefly talking about PPPoE on the ASA and how it can come into play and operate. There is IPv6 support. And on the blueprint, IPv6 is there, so we'll be discussing how IPv6 comes into play. There's also multicast support, so we will be doing some very, very basic multicast operations as well down the road, and how it comes into play where ASA can uh, be uh, be uh, part of the multicast deployment. And we'll take a look at management control and protocols. So what this is going or uh, basically the different ways of managing the ASA and interacting with it. We will be in, we will be managing the ASA through both the command line and the ASDM in, in multiple ways. So this will give us a lot of flexibility in terms of how we go through and interact with the ASA and things like that. There is uh, a bunch of flexibility and scalability options like the modular policy framework and how that can be used for both traffic inspection and traffic prioritization. And then we'll talk about the security management suite and with the Cisco security manager um, and talk about how that comes into play down the road. So that is pretty much everything that you would need to know about uh, what we're going to be covering here. Obviously, we're not going to be doing anything with the site-to-site -site VPNs or the remote access VPNs. But uh, my main goal here is to really break down the technologies around the firewall piece for ASA and then eventually iOS and how they come into play and then once we've brought those into understanding going to VPN and the other uh, sections like dealing with WSA, ESA and uh, Cloud Web Security, ICE, uh, TrustSec, things like that that will give us the, the um, the foundation for dealing with we'll have the firewall understanding so think of firewall out of the gate as one of your at least in my opinion one of your base fundamentals you need to have before you dive into all the other ones so VPN ice uh, web security those are all in my mind those are all enhancements to the firewall so we'll be taking a look at how that comes into play in upcoming videos until next time guys thanks for stopping by and we'll catch you guys in the next one